Stop using fire, use soul fire instead. And here's how to make snowballs into a looting three powerhouse. And these are 23 secret hacks hidden in Minecraft's code. Fire makes for a great decoration in your builds, but fire spread could also ruin your builds. So how do you find a happy medium? Well, the answer comes with soul fire. Since at this, even if fire tick is enabled, it doesn't matter, cause soul fire will never spread. And while you do obviously change out the color for this example, that's a small sacrifice for keeping the rest of your base safe. And come on, it's not like the blue fire looks terrible anyway. I really think that we're making an improvement on both fronts. And at the very least, you can build that new fireplace in your house without having to tear your hair out. Here's the best way to kill blazes. Since with a looting three sword in your main hand and snowballs in your offhand, we're able to throw those at the blazes in the spawner and still get the looting effect applied to them, which without a doubt is one of the cheapest ways to get looting attached to your weapon. It doesn't even take a hit to the sword's durability. And while you can unfortunately only hold 16 snowballs at a time while doing this, with how effective snowballs are against blazes, you're still gonna be all right. And as long as you save some of the snowballs to make a snow golem farm back home, it's also renewable, and you can't beat that. We can make this TNT launcher over three times better with just this simple trick. See, the problem is that because of the damage that you take in survival mode, we never seem to launch as high as we do in creative, but this user has a perfect solution. Since by simply attaching a dispenser full of arrows to shoot us before we launch off, then that little tick of damage is gonna make sure that we launch sky high off of one of these things. And if you don't believe me, just look at the comparison. It's pretty jarring. But with either method, it's important to remember. It's great that we have a way to launch ourselves into the air, but you're gonna need some way to safely land on the ground. Otherwise, it's a lot less impressive. Now, nether portals are a necessity, but I could do without the zombified piglins spawning in them. So if you're like me and you're also sick of those unwanted visitors, then with just a turtle-like place like so, we can bait them away from the portal. So sure, it doesn't stop them from spawning, but I'd rather treat the problem than learn how to live with it. And as long as the turtle egg isn't placed on a beach to grow up, it's not gonna hatch and the baby turtle won't object to it either. If you're looking for the fastest way to mine in Minecraft, then you're gonna need this on your leggings. Since even though dive mining's become less popular since its inclusion, with the addition of the swift sneak enchantment, now it's worth doing again. Because the name's misleading. It doesn't just give you a swift sneak, but also gives you a swift crawl. And with swift sneak three on our leggings, we can get some real speed while we're mining a one block tall tunnel. So as long as you don't have claustrophobia, it's worth adding to your to-do list. At the very least, it gives you a reason to go down to the ancient cities, because if we're being honest, the recovery compass isn't worth it. Mud makes for a great building block, so it's something that you want. But getting mud like this is definitely a pain. So rather, we should take after this example and convert all of our mud into body of water. By placing all of your dirt in a row like so, we can then offhand the water bottle and then hold a shovel in our main hand so that when we hit right and left click at the same time while moving forward, we both convert the dirt to mud and collect it. And while it could definitely take a few tries to get it to sync up properly, once you do, it's hard to look at this comparison and say that you're not saving time. It's a lot more satisfying and a lot simpler. I'll take both of those. Here's how to turn your lays into a deadly weapon. Since even though they can't equip it, if you give them a piece of Thorn's armor to hold onto, then any mobs that try to attack them will also take damage from that. And as you can see in this example from Raiseworks, if you tie your lay to a lead and then have a mob attack you, you might just have yourself the deadliest balloon in Minecraft. But if you do want to try this out, I have to give one warning, which is that even though the lays tend to regenerate a lot of health, there are still a few mobs that can kill them off. So to keep them safe and on your side, you might want to have a couple of lays doing this. That way the damage is getting evenly dispersed amongst the crowd. And if you really need to keep your lays from dying, then your real get out of jail free card here is that if you give your lay a total of undying, then they can use it just like we would. And there you go, you take them from hardcore mode right back into regular survival. Or if the Alay is not the only mob they want to keep safe, then with the fox as well, you can do the same. But unfortunately, they're a little bit tougher to get the totem too. Since for the fox, you need to throw the totem onto the ground for it to be picked up. But once they have it, it doesn't matter what kind of polar bear gets nearby. They'll be left unscathed, and you'll have a very confused polar bear as well. If you're building your mob farm without an armor stand, then you're doing it wrong. Since strange as it may sound, having an armor stand set up like this in the middle of your mob farm makes it so that when you use a sweeping edge sword, you don't have to worry about wasting one of your swings on dying mobs. Since anytime that you attack a mob with sweeping edge and it dies on the spot, then it just absorbs the attack without doing anything else. But attacking an armor stand alleviates this. And that gives us the best option for crowd control. And it also means that if you're swiping at the armor stand, you're not gonna take any thorns damage from any mobs that happen to spawn with it. So if all it costs is a training dummy to help you deal with these other dummies, then that's something I'm willing to take. Skulk sensors are very useful, but they're also very noticeable. But if you wanna keep their function while losing that fidelity, then it's worth noting that by waterlogging a skulk sensor, then they'll be silent, but still behave normally. Now granted, this doesn't make them entirely discreet since the sound waves are still visible, but as we can verify from the Minecraft subtitles, there's no sound that's given off from the skulk sensor itself when we do this. But when you're trying to use a skulk sensor for a hidden trap like this, then anything you can do to make it less noticeable is gonna go a long way. After all, it just takes one little detail for them to notice and the whole operation to go belly up. And for the price of a water bucket, 
I'd rather stack those odds in our favor. If we power this block with redstone, then this big drip leaf plant will never fall, which is admittedly very weird. It's what they're supposed to do. But sure enough, no matter how long we stand here, it'll never droop down. And interestingly so, if the big drip leaf was already drooping down, then by powering them on, they'll instantly go up to the locked position. And while this feature seems confusing, it's definitely intentional, given the fact that the drip leaf plant was included within the new redstone creative tab. And while it definitely looks out of place there, this does give us some cool new options of using this as a new kind of trap door. Almost like a timed trap door, if you will. You wait for the mob to fall, and then bam, lock it right up to the upright position. And I know for one that there's technical geniuses in the Minecraft community who can think of things way better than I could with this. So we'll leave it to them to see how cool it can be. If you want to fix your item stream, consider adding a slab in place. Since as Doc M showed off on Hermitcraft, just adding one of these in can make it easier for our items to stack together. And now the bone meal entities will wait until they have enough mass to eventually get pushed over. And that'll also help you to get some more space in between your items, which is definitely a plus when hoppers move so slowly. And perhaps the real icing on top of all of this is that when you have multiple item entities combined into one single stacked item entity, then that'll help to reduce lag as well. Which for the price of half a cobblestone block, it's hard to say that isn't worth it. You wanna know the fastest way to trade in Minecraft? And I'll give you a hint, it doesn't use any kind of big system like this. But rather, the most useful tidbit that you can know just relies on the space bar. The way you do it is simple. You click on the trade you wanna do, you click the item, and then you hit space bar to refill the commodities that the villager wants. And just like that, repeating a cycle of going space bar, click, space bar, click, we can completely trade through the villager's options before it needs to restock. And while this gets particularly helpful if you're trying to batch a lot of trades with something like a Fletcher, if you have villagers existed in your world from older versions, then they might be bugged in a way where they can trade infinitely. And then when you use this trick, you're pretty much set for life. So if you got the key on your keyboard, you might as well use it. Now I know that composters don't seem like the most helpful of items, but that might just be because you're using it wrong. Since what you need to understand is that the first item that you put into the composter is always guaranteed to fill up the first level. And that's regardless of the item that you're composting. So if you want the maximum efficiency when you're using your composter for bone meal, first put in an item with a low chance of composting for the first stage, and then use higher chance items like pumpkin pie for the rest of the way. That way you're saving these higher chance items for they're actually useful, which might not make composters the most useful block yet, but even if they're not useful, at least you know how to use them now. You can't see it, but there's a hidden ladder here, and it's not one that we made with sticks, but rather with the way that vines and maps overlap, we can mix together an item frame and a map to make our vines completely invisible and the map climbable, which could make it easier to do something like building out your large map on a wall, or better yet, for a hidden entrance. And you don't even have to go that far. You want a reason to do this? Now none of your friends can rotate that map part to make it look bad, since the vine's hitbox is slightly larger than the item frames. And when you got destructive friends like me, that's worth the price of a mission on its own right. If you don't yet have the mending enchantment, you'll want to pay attention to this. Because when you take those non-enchanted items and mix them together like this, it's not just the two durabilities that add up, but rather that repaired item will have the sum of the two items durability, plus an additional bonus of 5%. And hey, you did all of that without consuming any XP, which I again think is pretty useful. So if you're getting a lot of armor drops from your mob farm, this could be a good way to bring them back up to usefulness. Since even if these two items wouldn't add up to a full durability item, with that 5% repair bonus, it goes right up to clean and pristine, all of which without ever having to touch an anvil. If you're like me, then you're terrible with a bow and arrow. And unfortunately for us, that makes it really tough to get this advancement for the bullseye. Don't worry, this will make it simple. Since all we need to do is put a trap door on top of our target block, shoot an arrow right into the center, and then once we're in 30 blocks away, we can have either a friend or redstone flip the trap door open. At which point it counts it as if we shot the arrow from back here, and we easily get the advancement. And hey, you can do the same for the sniper duel achievement as well. Just switch out the target block for a different kind of target. Easy as that. If you live in a village, keep this one in mind. Since by attaching an observer or pressure plate next to your bed with a bell getting powered, then we make sure that when we wake up, the bell will ring and the villagers stay inside long enough for the zombies to burn on the outskirts. Otherwise, without this system, they might go outside, get a few residual zombies, and uh, you'll have a couple of zombie villagers burning out there as well. So if you already killed the iron golem around here, then the least you could do for the villager population is put in this bell system. And then we all avoid the rude awakening of having your village be completely ransacked by zombies. If you need to quickly get rid of some fire in the nether, then a good way to do that is by brewing up a couple of splash water bottles. Since these not only extinguish our cells when we catch on fire, but they can also clear this plus sign shape out of the fire that catches on the ground. So if you need to make sure that your items don't burn, it might help to throw down one of these. That way, even if you burn alive, at least your stuff won't. With a pillar of scaffolding like so and an observer up top, we can effectively use this to send redstone signals upward like so. All we have to do is have a trap door underneath the top of the scaffolding, and that way when the legs on the bottom one update, that signal will move across the top of the system until eventually it's detected by an observer and we get the redstone signal up there. 
But though I will mention that unlike using walls for this, the higher the scaffolding, the longer the input delay. But for the simplicity and compactness of this design, I think it makes up for this trade off and then some. If you have trouble fighting mobs at night, then you might want to brew up some weakness potions. Since surprisingly so, these can render a lot of mobs completely useless. I mean, you'll see as much if we use it on a zombie. They will still do their attack animation, however, you don't even receive a damage tick or a knockback when they do it. And folks, that's on hard difficulties. And it's not just zombies either, this will happen for slime, spiders, and even silverfish. And perhaps my favorite yet, if you use a weakness potion on a cave spider, that'll prevent it from poisoning you too. Which really makes these ankle biters seem a lot less intimidating when you use it like that. Let's say you need to move your pet dog, but you don't want to risk it dying while you're running across the treacherous landscape. Well, no worries, Raceworks has you covered. Since by attaching your pet to a lead and that lead to a fence post, we can use a piston like this so that when the item despawns, then your pet will suddenly teleport that long distance just like that. And through the help of a chunk loader like this one, we can make sure that this design never unloads. That way with whatever timer you build, it's gonna work just fine. And most importantly, it means your feline friend can travel thousands of blocks, all without having to move a muscle. Can't say I'm not a little bit jealous. Snow golems melt in the desert. That's not much of a surprise, even Frosty the Snowman could have told you that. But what you might be surprised to know is that if you use a fire resistance potion, that'll allow your snow golems to survive in hot climates. And yes, that even includes the nether, as silly as it might seem. So if you have a couple of these lying around after a piglin bartering, you could set up a couple of snow golems, splash them with this, and use those to help you eviscerate through that blaze spawner. Just get ready for the rude awakening when the potion effect wears off, and you're left with nothing more than a pile of snowballs in front of you. I guess nothing good ever lasts, huh? And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right, and have a good one, alright?